Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Today, we're going to talk about how to know how much money your startup should be raising in the first place. Now, there's a couple of methods you can use, and I'm going to run through three of them, and then I'm going to tell you which of the three is actually my favorite. So the first one is sometimes founders will just raise as much money as they can, and that amount of money is supposed to take them all the way until profitability. There's some challenges with this approach, particularly if you're in an industry, something like biotech, where building a product, going through testing and research and development and all that can take five, seven, ten years. If you're trying to raise that much money to carry you for that long, you may end up giving away more equity than you need to early on. So building for profitability is a little bit scary because sometimes also, even if you're not in an industry that takes a long time to get to profitability, you may never reach profitability. And so trying to plan for that can really be a tough, a tough method to use. The second one to talk about is raising enough money to accomplish just to get you to the next milestone. So first of all, what's a milestone? It would be an accomplishment. So like a prototype that's live, your first customers, your first paying customer, maybe your first thousand users. These types of milestones and traction show that you're accomplishing things and so when you start to build milestones and you go to raise money from investors, the more milestones you've checked off, the less equity that they should be asking for as part of the deal. So some founders will try and raise enough just to go from one milestone to the next. The problem with that method is that by the time you have raised and closed your round of funding, you're probably going to have to go right back into fundraising again. And so this, the founder, the CEO, whoever is driving fundraising just goes from one round of fundraising to the next. It has very little time in between to actually work on the business. And so that's kind of a, a challenge with the milestone approach. Now, my favorite approach is actually raising enough money to cover your burn rate for an extended period of time. So what is a burn rate? A burn rate is just how much money that your, your startup is burning through the expenses that you have in a given month. So if you have $10,000 in burn rate, and you want to raise what most founders will do is raise somewhere between 12 to 18 months of burn rate. Just take 10,000 times 12 and you get what 120, 180,000 dollars you would raise. If your burn rate's more than more than that, then of course you're going to raise more money. Now, in today's economy, you may not want to just raise 12 to 18 months of fund of funding. Why? Because fundraising is a little bit tough right now with the tough economy. We're probably going to hit an even tougher economy starting after the first of the year we're starting to see layoffs pile up and so i think we're going to see the economy cool when that happens investors pull back and they don't invest as much money and so you may want to try and raise instead of 12 to 18 months of burn rate you may want to extend that maybe to 18 to 24 months to give you a longer runway between fundraising rounds and in case it is tougher to get to that next milestone having that extra buffer of say six months of additional capital if you can raise it is a really really good thing now if you're new to startup funding and you need tips and want to understand how the whole process works including what documentation you're going to have to have how to meet investors what investors look for in a startup then i would encourage you to check out my course the startup funding formula i'll put a link in the notes below and i hope that helps you a lot